ding, 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 ding. We have a crackhead editor. I'm not talking about my own. I'm talking about Maxie. Ding, 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 ding. That's my crackhead bell. <laughs> So let's get straight into it. Before we get started, you know the vibes. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below to feed the algorithm what? And uh, check us out on Twitch. I stream every single day at Alicia X Life. If you're currently watching Alicia X Death, Alicia X Life is my Twitch. Link in the description below is the original video. Please support that. Support the original video. Be greatly appreciated. And uh, let's get straight into it, Shoddy. Ugh. I swear to God, if you throw me into that portal, I will fuck you. You were never one of us. Okay. You were nothing but an imposter. A mogus. is a game with so much testosterone dripping from its orifices that it caused me to create a sun via mitosis. In oh. this adventure, you play as John Doom, a man stricken with irrationally severe autism who does not consider or think through his actions and effects on other people. And in his quest to save mankind, he oh. God, God God, and Satan God God, who is also himself, if this indefinite game. Satan God God, who's God God, I gotta kill because I gotta kill God, but to kill God to kill myself. Yes, sir. Aging <laughs> hardcore male gameplay sounds appealing. Then I've got the game for you. This game is, of course, the sequel to the critically acclaimed Doom 2016, with a few key differences. Right, Ain't no way he put buddy. Sonic on there. I'm going to shit yourself. Oh. The extends and builds off of the gameplay and challenges that we love. Then extends them some more off of a fucking cliff until the product that emerges out the other side resembles crack concentrate. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you've probably played the game since I don't actually want to help people buy things. I'm here to entertain people, and if okay. you're clamoring for entertainment and haven't purchased this game yet, do yourself a favor. There's enough male hormones here to transition someone, <laughs> and I can guarantee you results, my fellow Sigma males. So whether you're I can become a Sigma male? It's my time! <laughs> Testosterone me! <laughs> psychopath like me or new to modern doom games come with me on this amazing journey through twitch gameplay beautiful environments nonsensically fucked up lore and remixed mongolian throat singing for money is temporary but doom is eternal oh cheeky see what he did there Oh. I would say that Doom Eternal's gameplay is quite unique and not for the reasons that you would think. Everything in Doom Eternal is funneled directly into a single, robust, multifaceted, multinational, and unilaterally combat system from which okay. the entire game is built around. But Maxor, I hear you thinking, that's every game ever. Yes every good game ever if i for instance became 12 and booted up gta 5 i would be able to do at least a dozen unfun activities doom's design is focused harder than the average persona fan on his local playground and that is special you oh. will play the game in the way that is fun or you will lose persona fans are you okay after that <laughs> persona fans are you okay after that so as good as 2016 was, a Polygon journalist could beat the first half, and that's unacceptable. Because yes, it is actually unfun to play games after having a lobotomy. In other games, I get to choose between things like stealth, vehicles, or outright combat. Yet Doom Eternal oh. asks the question, why not force you to use every mechanic all the time without stopping? In a world where AAA studios try to pander to everyone, it's refreshing to have a game that sets out to do one thing the best, and actually have developers who give a shit about linear design and gameplay. And the you know what? Of that gameplay is the arsenal because that's a good point. There's too many games that are just like trying to diversify so much to have so many different attributes that they kind of lack in all of them. So you just play it once or play it once through and you never have the replay value because you're like, okay, cool, I can just get that from other games. Yeah, just do that part aspect better, right? But when you have a game that just focuses on the one thing it does well, 
John Doom makes uses sense. every weapon throughout the game. The first shotgun is used in the last level, and the last level is used by the first shotgun. When you get an upgrade, it is <laughs> not a official. Oh, hell no. genuine addition to your arsenal. <laughs> every one of them has specific uses, and yet these don't interfere at all. They enhance. How do Whoa. I kill an enemy? Well, shoot his hands off. Fire a rocket. Fire a ballista. Fire flames. Freeze him. Fire fire on his freeze and fro shotgun. Shotgun. Brain aneurysm. Just as Whoa. important as how you kill is how you heal and how you restore. Fortunately, the aggression of this game rivals my dog in a kindergarten. Like real life, the only no, way to no, no, do that. is to kill them. How do I heal when low? Kill them. How do I get ammo back? Kill them with a chainsaw. In addition, most weapons in the game have two mods which completely change their behavior. Such stunning examples would be the microwave okay. beam, the automatic shotgun, and the fucking destroyer blade. God, that shit. Bro, you put an automatic shotgun in my hands that goes dunk, 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 dunk. Like the hell that was doing it? It's cool, but on top of yeah. that, mods and a declining mental state, we keep going. More than any one weapon, you'll be using your suit abilities, and they all have individual buttons. This is in addition to the eight that you use for weapons. These would be things like oh, for fast, that's too many buttons. Fast, grenade for life, oh, for hell no. <laughs> a flamethrower for armor. I play Invoker in Dota 2, and this shit makes me play my keyboard like it's a fucking Moonlight Sonata. I thoroughly recommend playing PC and never using the weapon wheel for maximal Ritalin output. And if you can't switch weapons fast or play on easy mode, that's fine, man. We're all busy. How about I give you two <laughs> more thought I Wait, that was so cute. I love that. That was so cute. The little insert. Because <laughs> normally it's like, no, pussy, play the hard mode. It's like, oh, dude, we get we all, we all have things to do. It's fine. We all have like, easy mode if you need to. <laughs> It's done. There's two ways to kill a demon in Doom Eternal. The fun way or the funny way. And to maximize the funniness level, we have the Crucible, which is a Give the funnies. instantaneous kill on every enemy. Giant area boss, dead. Previous area boss, dead. The oh. final boss, fuck him. Now I hear you thinking, Josh, that sounds pretty strong. Oh boy, buckle your ass. Because the second okay. weapon on my extensive list of two things is the BFG, which canonically stands big fucking for gun? big fucking gun. Yeah, also fair enough. Canonically, it fires a hole directly into the core of Mars. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. I, I should... You can just have that? <laughs> what? <laughs> Now, I could kill an enemy the long way, or I could kill him and his dog faster than the AT. Not his dog! Clears out everything you can see instantly. I am so thankful the game limits how many times you can do this. Now, I understand that at first this may seem complicated, but that just isn't true because the entire game is effectively a tutorial for hard mode. And because you're always learning as you play, it never feels stale. Doom even lets oh, you cool. choose what stats and runes to upgrade. I expect entirely. Well, that's like, that's like the nice part about what I was talking about before, where it's like replay value is something that's super under appreciated these days like i feel like a lot of the guns uh, not all the guns all the games that we play are meant for you to play over the amount of play time so that you can't return it <laughs> but never play again and it fucking blows man like i hate that there's like so many games that don't have replay value but then you have these awesome ass indie companies that are coming out with goaded games like Baldur's gate where you can keep play replaying that for the rest of your life and always have some new shit going on you know and it's like, damn, when some companies do something right, they do it damn right. And there's too many that are, like, focused on their microtransactions for them to be successful. And it's like, like, live service games, I feel like, are the ones that tend to um, care about their longevity a little bit more because of the microtransactions. But I feel like any game that's, like, a standoff game or a standalone game doesn't get the love. Baldur's not indie? Yeah, I mean, I could... Uh, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't call it indie. I consider it to not be the same style, though, as, like, say, Microsoft putting out a game. Or any Microsoft conglomerates, right? Yeah, it's an AA studio at best. Yeah, like, I'm considering AAA versus, like... AAA budgets are very different. Not AAA is fair. Okay, I think that's... Okay, that's... If we're gonna get into the semantics of it, sure, right? Because there's no way that you can be, like... Bandai has the same budget as, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> Bandai has stupid fucking money. And, like, listen, almost every game company that's AAA has stupid fucking money, right? Like, look at Microsoft. Microsoft bought out so many companies. Activision, stupid fucking money, right? And all those games that we have coming out currently are just so ass. Then you have things like Helldivers. Even the Lethal Company, which is kind of dying out a little bit right now. But... I think it's because, you know, popularity dies down over time when new games come out. But I don't think 
people real that was a true indie game. That's just one dude who made that. So it's like you have games like that with such high replay value and such nuance and such care and devotion into creating their game into elevating their game that you just don't get all the time anymore. I think a good example of that, to be honest with you, which is going to be a super hot take and people going to get mad about it. Don't do it. Look at the PS5 exclusives. Tell me if you've played a PS5 exclusive and actually gone back and replayed it more than once. <laughs> you haven't. You played it the once, you beat it, and then you put it into the goddamn dusting drawer for the rest of your life. Super Hot did not come out this year. <laughs> Ain't no way you're like, oh yeah, let's mention stuff that didn't come out this year. We're talking about this year, dude. Chill. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you ain't wrong? Yep. God of War Ragnarok still counts as last year, doesn't it? It doesn't even count as this past year. Think of this past year. <laughs> Triple A companies have let you down <laughs> and continue to let you down and buy out big ass IPs and then fail you again. You got to rely on the companies that aren't the Triple A studios because Triple A studios don't care about you, man. They know you're going to buy the game. They don't care if you keep playing it. They want you to buy the game, play it, then drop that shit. Why? Because you already bought it. We don't need to do anything else anymore. That's it. Xbox has been letting you down for a decade. Yep. So that you, so that you buy the next one, yeah. What about quadruple A games? Bro, what was it? What game was that? The one that was like, we're quadruple A? What was that game? It's like that ship boat game, something with bones or something? Anyone know, anyone know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay, Skull and Bones called themselves quadruple A. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Quadruple A. Take that money up your ass and blow it, dude. Fuck you. No, you're charging quadruple A prices. That doesn't make your game good. Just means you're charging more. I fucking hate that. Mm -mm. Mobility and ammo. Sorry, uh, for YouTube, YouTube's probably like, yo, dude, this is a long pause and tangent. I'm sorry. This is how I do live streams. <laughs> I'd be chilling. I'd be going off topic, having conversations with chat. You know what I'm saying? So, that's my thing. Anyway, making my character a flimsy crack addled spider monkey as a side monkey they should release dozens or possibly hundreds of macaques into New York City. Oh. They can survive there. Why does Thailand get to keep all of the good monkeys? So what more is there to learn about Doom oh. Eternal? Well, have you ever given thought to the various unwashed baboons that I'm fighting? The answer may shock you. <laughs> as you may have guessed, there are at least three, perhaps four demons in the game, which is a lot for someone who is a small blonde anime lolly such as myself. But it's the variety of I love that for him. Go off, queen. <laughs> the demons that make the game interesting. Demons can fly. More testosterone turns you into a lolly. Max are confirmed. Max are confirmed. He said this game gives you so much testosterone you transition. Transition to what? I ask you. To a lolly. A blonde female lolly. That is how much testosterone you all give in. Hmm. <laughs> They can roll around like hedgehogs, contract obesity, and be bastards. Who is Sandy Loam? Who is Tsushima? Amy Rose? I didn't know she could stand. The point of the entire game, therefore, is to balance targets, switch weapons, and scream. 
<laughs> Amy Rose. <laughs> Cause he's, <laughs> he's a funny joke. He's funny. <laughs> the pun on her name is funny. She rose and she had to know she could stand. <laughs> My brain is simple. <laughs> it lacks the wrinkles to enjoy other things, but it enjoys that joke. <laughs> <laughs> repeatedly fail to be cool just like high school what i'm getting at is every what? <laughs> has completely different behavior and goals from one another the doom hunter rolls around in a comically small tank the zombies like us exist to die and the marauder produces controversy he does a lot of damage blocks your attacks fights you at wild speeds and can only be attacked after blatantly signaling so i personally have no issue with him as i find the challenge fun and engaging and if you don't i'm not saying you're wrong i'm saying you're bad i'm not getting into the details Damn. for each one since that's not funny but the most offensive thing to say to a gamer without dlc and if you're wondering why i'm fighting the entire cast of dante's inferno you're actually the minority this game tries at every moment to make exposition collectible why is there just a, a fucking big spear in the planet and why is heaven comprised entirely of moth people you cannot stop the procession I guess like we can. One guy wrote the events of the game, and another guy invented LSD just to write the backstory. So I'm going to combine both of them into a single, accurate interpretation of the Doom lore. Okay. If I say something objectionable, just pretend that it's right. Okay. Sounds good to me. I'm ready to learn the Doom lore. Get ready, buck one buckle your seatbelt. years ago, there was a guy named The Dad who was effectively God, and he made moths in Lamp Heaven called oh, The Makers. Good. Every 10,000 years, all moths combine their collective consciousness into one giga moth called The Con Maker, who is the Moth Pope. So the moths rule over the galaxy oh, moth sort pope. of until Earth happens, and then we start fucking everything up. The Moth Pope finds John Doom after a spree of murders, and he explains to her that yes, hell exists. It's weird that humans knew about hell before God. Anyways, the Moth Pope that is weird. out that hell is real, very reasonably decides to sacrifice a planet to it. See, it turns out that God literally pieced the fuck out like 10 million years ago and let the moths do whatever they wanted. So oh. the con maker cannot be replaced and cannot die. So she sort of goes insane from the constant immortality. Now that would make sense. That checks out. Sweet hell energy by repeatedly sacrificing entire planets to the Dark Lord in exchange for it. Meanwhile, a sentient robot named Samuel Hayden is very busy on Mars. Earth has this problem called climate change and we need to find a new energy source. So instead of something hard and difficult like solar power samuel hayden is like what if we extract this cool blue energy from hell also it's on mars okay well <laughs> does this until hell begins breaking into mars and john doom stops them which is the plot of doom 2016. this makes samuel hayden mad because he's funded by the Koch brothers and really doesn't want to build a windmill so instead of destroying the demonic crucible he just brings it back to earth and catapults john doom into the backstory planet if you think that sounds unreasonable just remember that we considered blotting out the sun before building a fucking solar panel I only poo -poo. very important <laughs> Why build solar panel when we can extract hell's fumes to suffice? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you just hear one motherfucker in the government and <laughs> the U.S. government go, Well, I don't believe in solar energy. I don't approve of that environmentally friendly nonsense. That mythology of the environment. I say that we grab hell flames and use that shit on the planet. We are entitled to it as Americans. <laughs> Alright, well, fair enough. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, damn! Demons invade to recycle Earth into blue energy for the Moth Pope, so John Doom has to fight both Catholics and Hell. And as you go through the game, you might notice that it just brings up random shit at will. Like, oh sorry, the Soul Factory is being held there by two gigantic titans, and it's like, okay, I guess Attack on Titan is real now. Doom's okay. Like, You'll need this knife to kill my son. Oh shit, what do he do? He's the giant uncontrollable demon titan. The plot of the main okay. game, to understate it, is- Dude, some of these big-ass bosses I see are insane to look at. And acts as an Imagine Imagine designing those. Galactically convoluted tasks. Just in this one game, John Doom finds an ancient city like three times. Goes to the North Pole to kill Santa. Fights Croatia. Does a little trolling. Does a little cockfighting. Invades heaven and permanently kills God. But we'll get back to that. Doom 2016 took place okay. on Mars, but this game has you slung around the universe on a fucking bungee cord. So I understand completely. Oh. People say they don't play Doom Eternal for the plot. They're just wrong. I play Doom Eternal for the plot, and that might sound strange to you. 
you. But Eternal's plot is pure insanity, and it does everything that it needs to. We are painfully aware that the plot exists as a contrivance because the environmental designer went fucking ballistic. I just don't care. I played every single level, gleefully wondering, oh boy, what stupid shit is next? I cannot fucking wait. So, play the game for the Okay. Plot. It is integral to the experience of Doom Eternal. Oh, but Max, or there's a plot hole. How did the Doom Slayer get the first- Everything I've said so far, except some of it- Hold on, I need to scroll up for a second. Hold on. Someone in my chat? Flies in full partially to the base game, but- Inaccurate! It does not include the Doomslayer's true source of, the, of fury! <laughs> The demons killed his pet rabbit, Daisy. <laughs> Alright, I'm just trying to find the person who commented about that earlier. <laughs> Alright. Because then this just happened. And I was like, uh. Play the game for the plot. It is. Because then he said this. The <laughs> Open Max, or there's a plot hole. How did the Doom Slayer get the first? Everything I've said so <laughs> And I saw Doom Slayer in chat, and I was like, wait a second, I gotta find this person. <laughs> far, except some of it. Daisy's best rabbit? To the base Love game, that. But there's $40 reduce of DLC where the gameplay is faster, the challenge harder, and the plot somehow even fucking worse in all the right departments. 2016 okay. was the plot. Eternal is Usain Bolt, and the ancient gods is fucking Venezuelan inflation. You thought it was over when John Doom beat the demons and destroyed all of heaven, but you were wrong. That's just the beginning. And with both I fucking love Maxer, DLC man. Fully out, my recommendation cannot be understated. Let's get into why, and more importantly, what? Part three. The ancient gods. This section of the video is going to be different, far more structural, and aligned with the plot of the DLC. Because the gameplay isn't what's new about the product, it's the challenge and the story. I originally wrote an entire script for this and then trashed it because it doesn't truly communicate how this DLC drove me to insanity and I hard cope by simping for 2D women. I will tell you oh, there's a very big gameplay change, but the point of the DLC is more of what's amazing. If you like Doom Eternal, you will like the DLC. Period. Okay, so Samuel Hayden, you might know him for his various appearances on political YouTube debates advocating for carbon positivity. It turns out that he's not a robot. He's a fucking angel. Also, John Doom's Alexa oh. is God. That's not a joke or exaggeration. His name is Vega, and he is the physical remnant of God's consciousness in AI form. So Samuel, now a fucking divine being, wants you to revive him since both God and Satan are trapped in volleyballs. At this point, the video can't count as spoilers. Does that mean I can spike God? Dunk. <laughs> Because it makes no fucking sense. The first DLC is essentially trolling because you kill God. Why? Well, obviously to revive Satan exclusively so you can fight him. What could go wrong? Of particular note <laughs> here on the gameplay side is the final boss, who is Samuel Hayden. Because holy shit, this fight is hard. Also, the premise is ridiculous, and my enjoyment of the game is hurt by neither. Every aspect of this is speedy. God and damn. Everything else I've already said about the game in general. And when you finally beat Samuel and revive the Dark Lord, it turns out he's you. Yeah, the only thing in the world that could possibly kill John Doom himself. No blood can be <laughs> Not cutting back to him shooting in the chest in the middle of talking. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> So now the not you you decides to go to hell where we all belong, and the second DLC is just chasing him. This is, of course, where the testosterone moves into critical levels. How does one get to the capital city of hell? Well, that's a great question. First of all, go to the planet of Argentinur, light the bat signal, learn how okay. to train your dragon, okay? Go into the giant spear that pierces the entire planet for some reason. Get the key to the gate of Dimum. Now go back to Earth, traverse The Last of Us 2, and find the gate of Dimum. But before I get to the final got it, got it. Crash Bandicoot Twin Sand. There's some cool gameplay I want to talk about. Okay. You have a fucking hammer in this DLC. Primarily used to defy the laws of gravity. I like secondary. hammers. Everything in the game. Health? No problem. Ammo? Absolutely. My deepest, darkest urges? Yes. As I used this, I oh, became more fuck? obsessed with hammers than Bob the fucking Builder. And there's plenty of demons to use it on since the DLC adds a shitload of reskins. For instance, the spirit is a congealed amphetamine mass that makes every infested target three times faster. Microsoft oh! Pinball, who is fun to fight, I Speedy promise. Speedy boys! And the blood 
Make her stay our my original OC. Do not steal it. So now that we've reached Cleveland, it's time for the DLC to gain stand. in the back end. This is the culmination of all of our work. The final battle against Satan himself. And holy shit, you can feel it. When the Sentinel army shows up and everyone's ready to kick ass, you just can't help but feel like your dick is being tickled. Ooh. Cleveland lives up to the hype too, for once, because it's a non-stop battle of epic proportions right up until the final boss. This is a universe holy which shit. acknowledges your godlike power by making the only credible threat to you your identical twin with red eyes in a Gundam. That is called fucking gameplay. And it's a beautiful send-off right up until the man himself who awkwardly waddles around the arena like a penguin. But that's fine, the fight is still cool. Oh, God. Damn, he punched the mess out of him. God wow, damn. Wow, you know, it's so sad that Steve Jobs died of Ligma. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma balls. Oh. Got him. <laughs> I love him. I, I hate him for that joke. I hate him, but I love him. <laughs> want to talk about that truly complete this game make it a real 10 out of good firstly i would classify the music of this game as metal without guitars and i fucking dig it so much how do you make metal without a guitar well you sample mongolian throat singing and your lawnmower it just sounds so good normally music isn't very important but it's so good that it becomes important and the role it plays in setting your mood is vital also the main composer mick gordon like me hey there. watches virtual youtubers every waking second of his day great minds think alike <laughs> in fact most of the music in this video is just doom eternal soundtrack guess you'll have to re-watch it over and over again to really listen didn't he have like big issues with the company where they wouldn't pay him and they were like gonna release the Doom Eternal soundtrack as like an album. And they like fucked him over completely, but they painted this narrative that he was the problem. And then he was just like, hey, this is what actually happened. And everyone's like, oh shit, my bad, bro. Yeah, god damn. What the hell? <laughs> Not in a, oh wow, look at all these particles I'm stroking out way. It's more like, how does literally anyone have time to model all of the geometry in the game? It is unreal. It is so downright inspired that it makes you feel bad while playing it. Doom Eternal is such a fast and pulse pounding game that it's like sprinting through the fucking loop. How am I supposed to appreciate the Mona Lisa when it My brain, my brain just started lagging. Hold on. Okay, how do we appreciate the Mona Lisa when? Looks like this. Should you buy the game? Yes. Yeah, see, that's. See, my brain started lagging, and then that happened, and then my... Okay, yeah. No, it checks out. <laughs> I'm very biased. If speed and action is what you crave, and you want to induce cardiac arrest early, this is your game. I would like to thank the Demonic Brotherhood funding this channel in exchange for their souls. If you would like to engage in blood sacrifice on my behalf, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. Thank you all for watching, and of course, run. They're coming. I will make more videos. This is a threat. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> As per usual, Max is incredible. As per usual. What else do we expect from, except for greatness? My brain it feels like it's slowing down. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like... So, no, no, it happens every time. Uh, who am I kidding? Every time I watch a Maxer video, my brain's like... Uh, process. <laughs> God, he's so good. God damn, he's so good. Anyway, support the original video. Link to the description below. Don't be a dickhead. Support that. While you're here, support this channel too. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below to beat the algorithm. Quads. We'll catch you later. Bye.